Good evening, Azeroth, and welcome to episode 120 of the World of Goldcraft. As usual, I'm your host, the Lazy Goldmaker of the LazyGoldmaker.com, and uh, I'm going to be talking about gold making, obviously, for about 20 uh, 20 minutes. Um, so uh, this is going to be uh, this is going to be fun, hopefully. Um, as usual, the podcast is made available by my patrons and subs. So if you're uh, interested in joining us and you want to get um, access to all of the stuff I post on uh, thelazygoldmaker.com seven days ahead of time, then head on over to patreon.com slash thelazygoldmaker. Um, but let's start talking about um, about gold. So um, I'm going to start talking about a little bit about what's going on with the game right now. Uh, because there are some interesting things happening or are going to be happening in the very short future. Um, obviously we have the, the weekly events. Uh, this week there's a dungeon event. Um, which does not have much of a gold making effect. Um, what's more interested for at least a couple of more days the Darkmoon Fair will be in town. Um, so there's still time to take advantage of that. There are multiple ways to make gold with <laughs> the Dark Moon Fair. I don't do any of them myself, but there you have the replica Dark Moon Fair items, the transmog stuff, there are Dark Moon uh, Fair pets. You have the various items that you can turn in. Um, many different items that are much more desirable or much more uh, common during the fair and that you can make money flipping or potentially farming if you're so inclined. Um, what's much more interesting is the fact that the Love is in the Air um, event is coming up. Um, and this one is actually, I uh, i hadn't realized this before, but this one is has a very interesting item from a gold making perspective, which is the Swift Lovebird mount. Um, the only way to obtain this is um, through the Love is in the Air event. But the mount itself can be traded to other players. It's not bind on pickup. Um, so if you just look uh, look up the Swift Lovebird on the Undermine Journal, well, uh, and you'll see that every February the price tanks because people can finally acquire new ones, and then the prices rises all throughout the the year. Um, so this is an item to if if you just like farming the event and you can farm some. Um, otherwise, it's this is a very good item to invest in a couple uh, over the next couple of weeks. Um, and um, and then you can sell them throughout the year, uh, and you're very likely to make money because there's no one can farm more <laughs> supply. Like once the uh, once the once the event is over, there's not going to be more than the ones people have in their banks. Um, of course, there's going to be people with large stockpiles, but they're all also going to want to to make a profit from that item. Um, so this one is um, is a very interesting item that I probably should have been aware of for a long time ago, but um, I'll I'll for sure be buying Swift Lovebirds probably on all of my realms because I want to invest in in good long term uh, good long term items, and it's just a really really good long term item. Um, because there's no supply coming in after after the event is over, so um, so that's um, that's well that's something I'll be spending gold on. Um, so usually I have one discussion point or one or two, but I wanted I have a couple of things I want to talk about because uh, um, in this episode uh, because there are a lot of news that came out related to some of it related to gold making or well, not that much. We have the TSM four point eleven announcement. So Trade Skill Master, they're coming out with an with a new version, it's the uh, version 4.11. Um, and uh, what's coming? Well, we're g- finally getting a, a user interface for crafting optional reagent gear with uh, TSM. That's going to be great. Hopefully, it can effectively help me keep stock in the um, Crafters Mark II market, which is really good. Um, there might be coming a new price source related to uh, market value. That's just based on three days of prices rather than the 14 days of prices that the the current market value um, the current market value price source is based on um, so that that's going to be very useful if that, if that makes it into the build that's going to be very useful for identifying trends um, because you can use that together with the market value which is the price based on the last 14 days of auctions and the historical price or DB historical which is called in the um, as a price source, which is based on data over the last 90 days. So you end up with, you can compare all those three and then you can see like, okay, if uh, short market value is lower than market value is lower than DB historical, then this is an item that's trending downwards, obviously. 
um, and you can potentially identify it's we won't know if it's going to be that useful but it'll help you identify trends and you can just automate this in your settings like as soon as the short market value is above a certain point then you're going to change your purchasing thresholds for instance um, and it can be useful particularly for flipping um, so that's going to be um, be interesting outside of that i hope they add some proper support for the base legendaries as well um, when it comes to like the base functioning of TSM, uh, it already works so well for my personal use. Um, I'm always excited to see what they what they add for me personally. I'd probably want to see some more um, some more tools for analysis. Um, I think that's where the um, the, the in-game add-on is is lacking the most in terms of looking at your sales and trying to figure out what your profit is. Um, so th some things that would have been interesting would have been to um, calculate your average crafting cost for various crafted items and just for instance and calculate like an assumed profit based on that and use your average buy for the materials or um, maybe um, probably average buy or some other some other source um, to calculate like roughly your average purchasing cost for the materials that you've crafted with and then you have the average sale price for the items you've crafted um, and that would be pretty nice to sort of see how um, how well you're actually doing um, so um, yeah obviously um, it's gonna be fun to uh, see I don't think this is gonna be as big as TSM 4.10 was um, but uh, hopefully it's going to make the add-on a little bit more Shadowlands ready, which is about time. Um, what more? Well, there's uh, Bliss Conline is coming. Um, it's in two, two and a half weeks now. Um, and uh, of course, they are going to be talking about what's next for, for Shadowlands. They're probably going to be talking about other franchises. Um, and I'm sure that they will be adding something to the pre-order. To the pre-order queue something who knows what they'll probably have promotions um and this is you probably gonna drive up demand for tokens in terms of people buying it with gold so i do expect token prices to rise over the um, around blisk online especially if they announce uh, a new pre-order uh, or make a new pre-order available and um, i do expect a lot of people will be buying that and we'll see some relatively high token prices over the next couple of weeks we already have the new six month promotion on the lucky yun mount um which is gonna drive some people to to buy up to six uh, enough gold for for six months worth of tokens so they can buy the um buy the long-term subscription and get that so um, um that's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of an expensive month for those of us uh, paying with tokens but it's fine now, I do expect also that we'll be hearing about patch 9.1 and potentially what's coming further along as well. Um, so what I've done, I've taken a look at what happened during 7.1 and 8.1 um, to get an idea of what we can expect from patch 9.1. Um, and there are some, some similarities when looking at the first patch of Legion and the first patch of, um, of BFA. In Legion, they added a new dungeon in the form of Karazhan, a uh, mythic dungeon, and they added a small three-boss raid in the form of Trial of Valor. So this was um, a relatively thin first patch. Uh, they also added some world quests and a continuation of the Soromar campaign, and that was sort of the marquee features of that uh, of that patch. Um, so, and then in 8.1, in Battle of uh, in Battle for Azeroth, they added uh, two new raids in Battle of the Sarlor, which is sort of a more full size one, and the Crucible of Storms, uh, with uh, three bosses, I believe. Um, they also continued the war campaign, and they added a new war front, but there were no new dungeons. Um, and one of the things was that none of these patches had none of them had new zones. Um, and there was, of course, a bunch of other changes, and some of them are going to be hugely impactful, like smaller changes to professions, um, new recipes, new items, so uh, an increase in item level, so many things like that. Um, and of course, many of those things will be making it into 9.1 as well. Um, but based on what like the major content of 7.1 and 8.1, my best guess is probably that we get a, obviously we'll get a new raid, uh, probably a new dungeon, uh, and I would assume that we get some sort of expansion to Torghast. Um, and maybe the Maw as well, because those features do um, do seem to get a lot of flack 
I don't think we'll see a new zone or flying. I think they'll be uh, focusing on uh, on Torghast and the Maw and probably a dungeon and a raid that's tied together would be my guess because they don't have a warfront this time around. They don't have any sort of, uh, or island expeditions or anything like that. So I think they'll be um, possibly be able, they will at least be able to, if they wanted to, put more dev effort into into the instanced content, which is what most people play WoW for. Um, so, um, so that's sort of what I expect uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, obviously, they'll be doing uh, tons of smaller changes as well and targeting whatever people are most vocal about disliking to pull people back in. Um, because new patches is generally when a lot of people get back into the game. Um, so, um, so that's sort of what I expect content-wise. Now, of course, <laughs> I'm sure most of you are wondering, like, uh, what's going to be the gold-making effects? What's going to happen to prices? What's What items are going to be good? Um, so the general trend with new patches is always we get more players in, more players back into the game, more players focusing on hard endgame content again because they usually always add more uh, new raids, which means uh, a new set of progression bosses to, to kill and suddenly maximizing the performance of your character becomes very, very important. Um, so typically that means that we'll get a, a ton of people coming back into the game and a lot more people focusing on endgame stuff, so they need items for that. They need, uh, they need consumables, they need, um, they need to update their gear uh, once again. They need to get enchants, they need to, they're really buying all of this stuff at a much higher pace than they have been um, for the, the last couple of weeks uh, leading up to the patch. Um, because right now we're in the, in the point of the expansion where people are starting to finish off um, their Nathria progress goals. Many people are. Um, many people, I mean, there's more than 100 guilds in the Horde Hall of Fame at least. Um, in terms of mythic progress, many smaller guilds are um, getting towards the end of heroic progress, probably. Um, and people are sort of finishing their main goals for, for this patch. Um, so that's going to be um, that's going to be what they they look forward then to the next patch and, and new new challenges. Um, so um, so yeah, we this also of course means that there's going to be a new item level threshold. Uh, they'll, they'll be rescaling the item level ladder probably and um, I'm assuming there's going to be like an increase in item level across the board from the lowest level of content upwards. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they tie this to Renown. Uh, presumably they'll be keeping some of this tied to Renown. I'm sure the Renown cap will increase and we'll be continuing the the Covenant campaigns and working to get an even deeper connection with uh, whatever our Covenant is. Um, and of course, with a higher item level of everything, or at least most things, then we'll also see higher item level from crafted gear. I am sure that we will see a Crafter's Mark III. Um, I would personally guess that they add the Crafter's Mark III recipe to some form of content that's tied to the new patch. Um, but uh, we'll see if they add any sort of rep or time gate style content to unlock it or if they add it to one of the already existent uh, reputations that's also possible um we'll just have to see where, um, how they go with that obviously they'll also be adding higher ranks of the base legendaries because otherwise people are going to be really really unhappy about running their 235 legendaries when we're uh um when we're well into um when we're well into a raid that's going to give significantly higher item level than that across the board. Um, it'll be interesting if they tie that to the current recipes. Um, we have very rarely gotten new zones or new materials in the first patch, and I don't think we'll get it this time either. Um, so that's going to mean that most likely the, um, the base engineers are going to be using the same materials that they are currently using. Um, which would obviously lead to a supply uh, or a demand increase for those materials. Um, maybe they add rank 5 and 6 as higher ranks with higher uh, material requirements. Maybe they add some sort of new base item. Uh, and maybe they even add some, some new form of currency or item similar to the Arboreal Shard with some weird way of getting it. There are many different paths they can take. Um, but I hope they keep it tied to professions because that's at least been um, been pretty interesting. Um, although it's a little 
it's getting a, the profit margins are falling but it's still quite profitable to to craft them um so um so yeah overall i think we'll see a lot of material prices increase with the patch uh if if my predictions hold true of course those are her um are uh, i have a history of being wrong and right about many different things so don't uh um, don't take off spending all your gold yet and of course it's still quite a while away and material prices are going to keep trending downwards all the way probably until like the last week or two before the the next patch um, it do will depend a little bit on what we see on PTR um, if there's any specific like okay people start identifying that we're going to need millions of callous hides and suddenly people start buying up all the callous hides and the price um, skyrockets before then um, the other thing with the item level increase is the BOEs. Um, so one source of or one type of BOEs that's been pretty profitable so far are the world drops, um, both the 190 weapons and the 207 pieces that cover some of the slots that aren't too easy to get from raiding. Um, so in in BFA they kept the old item level, um, like the when uh, when 8.1 hit and 8.2 and 8.3. They did not increase the item level of world drops, which meant that uh, the weapon world drops that were incredibly profitable during patch 8.0, I made so much gold flipping those, um, they were useless because it was now extremely easy to get catch-up gear at the same item level. Um, so if that happens, then a lot of the current BOEs are going to fall in value significantly. Obviously the raid BOEs. Um, I don't expect anything except for the the mythic level ones to keep any sort of meaningful value. But of course, people are people might still be interested in buying Nathria BOEs just for from heroic and normal, just for a quick, very cheap boost. Um, this will also depend a little bit on where on the item level spectrum the Crafters Mark Three items fall, uh, which I don't have in my head. Probably should have that. Um, but that's sort of what I expect from um, from nine point one. Um, so if we have any questions, now is the time to Twitch chat and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get, a, get a couple answered, hopefully. Um, so if anyone has any, now is certainly the time to, to post them. Otherwise I'll just have to keep talking uh, my own ears up, which is, which is fine. Um, I'll, um, I'm hoping that they do something to BOEs this time because it was very sad watching them just crater um, in uh, in BFA. I think it's a little bit of a bad design choice to keep items that are effectively completely useless um, or rather don't fill a, a useful gearing niche. Uh, the 190 weapons fill a very useful gearing niche now because they're the only the, the only way to get an instant weapon as soon as you hit level 60. Um, but if they are not scaling up, then uh, then the value of that is just going to fall down significantly. Um, uh, no, I don't have any idea of when 9.1 drops, but I'm assuming that they'll give us news about that on BlizzCon line. Um, and we might. I'm I'm guessing it's a couple of months away, and that we'll get um, get news and maybe even an, a, an announcement of PTR. And at least the major content pieces, I'm guessing they will be unveiled on BlizzCon Online um, in two and a half weeks. And then somewhere between two to three months after that, I'd guess the, the patch would drop. Um, but I'm not someone who follows the, um, the launch schedules religiously or have a, a really good insight on that, but I'm assuming it's, uh, um, it's coming down the line. But um, but yeah, all right. So um, seems we don't have any other questions. So I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the episode. Um, if you um, if you have any uh, any comments, uh, then do let me know. I tr want to try to improve this a little bit if I can. Um, this is the sec only the second one I'm doing live and posting as a YouTube video. Um, so I was gonna put it in a little bit of a weird spot, but uh, but hopefully you enjoyed the last one. And, uh, and this one, if you have any uh, anything you'd like to hear me talk about, then do let me know as well. I definitely want to um, get into some of the topics that you'd like to hear me expand on in, in this kind of format. 
uh, it's obviously more interesting to talk about um, what's on, on on a lot of people's mind than just on what's on my mind. So um, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching, listening, or uh, just stopping by. And um, thank you to my patrons for making this podcast and, uh, and YouTube show a reality. And I wish you all a very profitable week. Goodbye.